Hi, I'm Glenda Russell. I'm a clinical psychologist. I've been licensed to practice psychology in this state for over two decades. I currently serve as a member of a task force convened by the American Psychological Association to revise that association's guidelines for psychotherapy with lesbian, gay, and bisexual clients. I tell you that not because I speak with you as a representative of that task force or on its behalf, but rather to indicate the depth of my expertise on the issues. I've been asked to comment today on the position held by mainstream psychology, psychiatry, and social work organizations on the issue of reparative or conversion therapy. I'll begin with the conclusions of mainstream mental health organizations, and then I'll fill in some of the details. First, the conclusion. No mainstream mental health organization in the United States supports reparative therapy or believes that it works. None. In fact, mainstream mental health organizations have offered policies suggesting everything from a huge caution to an outright prohibition on reparative therapy. Let me briefly explain to you why. The entire premise of reparative therapy is that there is something in need of repair. The American Psychological Association, the American Psychiatric Association, and the National um, Association of Social Workers all agree that lesbian, gay, and bisexual orientations are not a psychological problem. There is, therefore, nothing in need of repair. Mainstream mental health organizations have long recommended great caution about any intervention designed to cure something that is not regarded as a mental health problem. In this case, it would seem that caution is particularly in order when what reparative therapy is trying to cure represents the best of human impulses, the impulse to love another human being. That is the bottom line. Mainstream mental health organizations stand in opposition to reparative therapy. Now let me fill you in on some of the few details anyway. Reviews of research on conversion therapy span several decades, and they consistently show one thing. Efforts to change sexual orientation are ineffective. These reviews highlight a host of methodological problems in the conversion therapy literature, weaknesses in how the studies are conducted that are so severe that they really bring into question any of the results from those studies. Even the most optimistic advocates of conversion therapy find that sexual orientation is nearly impossible to change. Fewer than one-third of subjects in such studies even claim, even claim to change at all. And those who report changes don't really report changes in sexual orientation. They report changes in their behavior. The most frequent change that they report is, is that they suppress their sexuality altogether. They stop being gay or lesbian by suppressing everything about being in relationship with other people for as long as they can pull that off anyway. The desire of people to change their sexual orientation from lesbian or gay to heterosexual is predicated on stigma or oppression. People internalize the negative attitudes about lesbian and gay lives, and they decide that they're not so sure they want to they want to belong to a stigmatized group, and that's an under, understandable kind of conclusion. They don't want to, to accept an identity that ends up with their being told that they're bad, that they're immoral, that they're crazy. They don't want to deal with the fear of multiple losses that are often associated with being lesbian and gay, losses that include things like losing one's family, losing one's friends, losing a career, losing a spiritual community. These fears are certainly understandable, they're realistic, but what we've known for years and what we've demonstrated through research is that those fears are a natural reaction to oppression or to stigma. We also know from research that, that there is a possible way to integrate one's sexual orientation and to move toward an integration that leaves individuals functioning well as persons and as members of the larger community. But besides not working, reparative therapy has another real problem, and that is the potential for real harm that's associated with these particular therapies. Conversion therapists mislead clients about the nature of sexual orientation, about the possibility of change, about normative life experiences of lesbian, gay, and bisexual people. Conversion treatments often leave clients with more conflict than they started. They often leave them alienated from themselves and from their families and from their religion. They often leave them with a problem of avoiding intimacy of all kinds. They often leave them with sexual dysfunctions, with depression, and sometimes even with suicidality. 
Let me say by way of conclusion, we have treatments, gay affirmative treatments, that offer help to individuals who are conflicted about their sexual orientation. The gay affirmative treatments work, we have research on that, and they do not cause harm, we have research on that as well. That stands, that gay affirmative treatment stands as a far probable contrast to reparative therapies which do not work and sometimes cause very significant harm to people. It is on the basis of those researched conclusions that all of the major mental health associations in the United States have issued very strong straight statements of extreme caution around conversion therapies or reparative therapies. Thank you.